Hello everyone, Shannon Flummerfeld here for Flip Schools. Welcome to the Sustaining Improvement series. This video is one in a series of fives that will introduce to building administrators a unique tool uh, that maybe you haven't heard about before, a tool called the 5S. 5S is a tool that's very, very nice for leading and managing improvement processes and taking those processes to the point of being able to sustain them. Today we're going to explore the fifth of five steps in the 5S tool. So first of all, what is a 5S? Well, <clears throat> I don't know if as a building administrator you've had a chance to see a lot of ideas come and go and come and go and come and go. And what 5S does is it really helps you to take a good idea or, a, or best practice and work with it until it actually becomes something that is sustainable in your building. So in terms of being able to leverage some of the good things that are going on in your building is just a great tool. In fact, you might find as we go through this 5S tool that you're probably already using some or all aspects of it. And uh, many people find that that's very true. So this will probably be a pretty easy understanding for you if you're working at all with improving instruction in your building. Well, the 5S itself is just a simple visual management tool, or it creates um, a map, so to speak. In order for you as a building administrator to create a collective work where you have faculty working together, or maybe you're working with other administrators, or maybe you're working with students in your building, and what you want to be able to do is to develop and then maintain improvement uh, based on best practice. And there are five steps in order to do that. That's where the name 5S comes from. They all begin with an S. And they are sorting, setting, shining, standardizing, and sustaining. And so in this particular video, we're going to focus on the last step, sustaining. Uh, there are some other videos that take you through some of the other steps as well as provide you with some information about uh, sustaining improvement and what that might mean for leadership work. Well, today I want to uh, focus on an example for you that takes you through the 5S steps and really focuses on the sustaining improvement strategies. And we're going to use reading instruction as, a, as an example today. So let's say that in your building you have um, flipping going on in your classrooms and you're looking at your school flipping. And um, what's beginning to happen is that um, there's probably a lot more conversation about instruction and assessment and just the whole process of teaching and learning in your building. Uh, because when you flip, begin flipping, that is what this platform can do for you, is really create a venue to be able to discuss what works and what doesn't. So the idea is to be able to uh, innovate, create some improvement, fashion that into some form of best practice, and then be able to sustain it. So this fifth step sustaining is um, a way to help you think about how to, how to do that. Now, let's say that in your building, um, with flipping, you've been able to uh, figure out what matters in reading instruction. And, you know, you're really thinking about this because you understand, you know, reading is not only a, a part of English language arts and some of the core uh, common standards, but it's fundamentally a core competency that's needed for uh, the 21st century. So it's really important that at-risk students and all students are well served by reading. And so what you begin to do is think about, well, what are some things in our building that we absolutely need to do in order to uh, provide good reading instruction? And let's just say you come up with this list of nine items here. And uh, they include, you know, curriculum and uh, having good interventions, working for students who are at risk, instructional technology, and so on. These steps have been described in the other videos in this series. Now, the, the fifth step, sustaining, is preceded by these four steps. So let me just briefly frame this for you so you can follow the line of thinking here. But again, each one of these uh, videos in this series will give you a little more detail on what these involve. So what we've done here is we're beginning to look at reading instruction. And what we're trying to do is 5S reading instruction, if you, if you will. And so in order to do that, what's happening is that we're figuring out of this list of nine strategies, 
There are some that we don't really need to worry too much about right now. Maybe they're working really well in, in your building. And so we, we can kind of set those aside. But the ones that do need um, some work, we can bring those forward. And so in this case, on the list of nine there, item number two, through sorting and setting, um, developed as a very high priority item that really needs improvement. And so once that's decided and all of your nine strategies or however many there might be for, for this problem that you're working on um, get sorted out and set into categories, then you can begin to work on them. So uh, shining and standardizing allows you to do that. And those are steps three and four. Shining and standardizing um, help you to understand really what's wrong with the assessment and intervention process, what's happening. And one of the problems in this particular example were, were that there was way too much time being taken to pre-qualify students for um, a right to intervention processes if they needed them for reading. And it was taking up to a semester. And so the school worked and developed a, a new way of doing that by using some um, of the student work that was already available as a part of a formative assessment process, whittled it all down from 20 weeks to five weeks, created a pilot, and piloted for five weeks a five-week um, um, pilot of uh, bringing, bringing a student through a pre-qualification process. And so then once that was worked out, that was shining through piloting and fixing the pilot and so on, then the building was ready to go ahead and standardize. And so they worked that through and uh, tried to make sure that all teachers were following the timeline, that the quality of the interventions were happening correctly with students, and that student reading, reading was actually improving. So now the building is ready to say, you know what, we have kind of figured out now with this second strategy, timely assessment and intervention, what to do with it. And so now you're ready to go ahead as an instructional leader and make sure that everything that's been learned through the previous four steps of sorting, setting, shining, and standardizing, that now these strategies are being sustained. And um, so one of the things that you can do is, you know, you want to just make sure that you're providing the right kind of a setting, the right kind of a culture for the, this solution, this improvement solution to be sustained in your building. You don't want people to forget about it and so on. And one of the suggestions here is that uh, perhaps you could, could rely on the work of Bowman and Deal. And Bowman and Deal, what they do is they've got these four frameworks they've created, a structural human resources, political and symbolic view. And what these frames do for you is they help you to think about initiatives and work from four different perspectives. And if you can think about it from these four perspectives and make sure that everything's in good order, then you actually really are probably moving into sustaining and, uh, you know, it, then, then it just becomes a part of what's automatically done in the building. But for you as an instructional leader, you can make sure sustaining is happening by checking to make sure structurally is the solution working? Is the design good? Is it operational? Do people understand the standards that are happening? Do you see that the solution is causing teams to work together, problem solving to happen, um, people being very clear about what the goals are and communication working really well. If, if those things are not happening so well from the structural frame point, then what will happen is, is it will be very hard to sustain this particular solution. Also then, adding to structural, you can also look at it and enhance your viewpoint by adding the human resources framework. In this case, you're looking at what are the needs of people. Are we really meeting needs? Are we meeting organizational needs? Are we meeting students' needs? Are we meeting uh, many of the stakeholders' needs who you know are of interest in this problem? Are we seeing that as we're working together on things that uh, there are incentives to do that? Are people getting rewarded and recognized when um, successes happen and so on? Do we really have a buy-in to the vision? These are all parts of the human resource frame. And then also another frame that you can add to the structural and human resources is the political frame. Now, not political in the sense of um, 
politics, but in the sense that you know this this has this work has to have some kind of strategic importance. There, um, you have to understand that there is going to be enough support, enough of a coalition, enough of a peer cohort that you'll get to a certain tipping point, and that that will happen if people value what what you're proposing or what's being proposed out of this 5S process. So think about it from the political view and also the symbolic view, and that is that around sustaining strategies, there's a chance to create traditions and routines that are founded not in just whatever we've done in the past, but founded on we have gone through this and figured out what best practice is. So we're actually beginning to routinize best practice through this last step in 5S. And when you do that, you know, you can, you can have some fun things happen. There can be humor and ceremony and metaphor. And you, you can try to create some meaning for people so that they feel a real affiliation with the work that's being done and helps them to understand mission and, and, and purpose in, in the deepest level. So if these five frameworks are used um, by you as an instructional leader in your building, I think you'll be able to really uh, fully realize what it means to sustain the work that you've done through the other steps of the 5S. So just to review now, 5S again is just a simple mapping tool. You know, you can kind of keep track of where it's step one, where it's step two, three, four, and five. And, you know, you work yourself through this and you do this collectively. 5S just helps you to sort of figure out what stage you're in. And so finally, you know, you'll know when, you, when you're starting to shine and standardize and getting into sustaining, you'll know that you're really, uh, you've done something significant in terms of improving instruction. Well, I hope this video has been helpful to you, and certainly you can always find out more information about improvement and flipping at the Flip Institute website. If you just type in the flipinstitute.com, you'll get to our site. And thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the video.